Leva, let's start with the final play of the Tennessee game. Your magical powers, waving Tyson Williams and the entire offensive line in. What were you seeing in the, on that play, and, and what prompted you to do that? It was funny because uh, we had an RPO call, so I had a slant as my primary um, primary objective in that play. So when I ran my slant, I ended up being four, four three yards in the end zone. And as I look back, I, I, I kind of see like the Tyson's demeanor as he was pushing that pile. He was leaning forward, two hands on the ball. And I, I just knew he was going to score, so I was like, oh, shoot, like, he's still moving. Like, that pile is still moving. So then I kind of just waved once, and he kept moving. I kept waving and waving, and it was just a bunch of adrenaline, just reacting to the whole situation and just fun overall. So that's, that's kind of how the whole play played out. Now, I know mentally your team, and, and as you should, you've, you've moved on to USC in preparation. The Tennessee high was fantastic. But as you now look ahead to another ranked opponent from the Pac-12 coming to Lavelle Edwards Stadium, what's the first thing that goes through your mind when I say USC? Um, a, a team with a lot of tradition, a team that has a lot of history of being really good. Um, being a Southern California kid myself, I grew up watching them a lot more than BYU. I hate to say, but um, otherwise, that it's going to be a it's going to be a really good challenge for us. Um, USC comes in, as you say, ranked. Um, they had they were very successful the last two games, and they have a lot of talent all across the board. So for us, it's going to be really good for us to defend our our stadium here at home. What have you learned about their defense and? what BYU can do to try and exploit some things against the Trojans. They're a little similar to what we faced the last two weeks. Um, secondary, they're very skilled. They have guys that will go man coverage all the time. Um, they have a good linebacker core and D-line. And, and for us, we're going to have to be able to stay consistent on every play. We can't shoot ourselves in the foot anymore. We have to make sure that we're assignment sound, we're having no pre-snap penalties and no turnovers. And ultimately, I feel like we can play with anyone when that happens. What kind of emotion has existed with this team in practice this week, given the emotional high that you're coming off from Tennessee? Yeah, it's a little different. Um, coming from Utah, we came off a loss, so we, we kind of put our heads down and we need to work. And this week, it needs to be the same thing. Although we won, we also need to make sure that we're still putting our heads down and still working. Um, that, Like I said, that loss is behind us and that win is also behind us. And we need to focus on this next week and making sure that we're working the same. What was priority number one after you watched film from the Tennessee game for the BYU offense? For our offense, we just make sure that we need sustained drives. We need to keep our defense off the field. We need to be able to control control the clock and control the ball and make sure that we, you know, our defense has been bailing us out of a lot of things. We, we, we need to kind of flip that and make sure that we put up a lot of points this week. What has Zach Wilson done after two weeks to show improvements that you're seeing from your quarterback that makes you feel like, okay, we can go and score points against USC? Yeah, he deserves, he deserves, deserves a lot more credit than he gets. Um, for him to be understanding everyone's position on the field, everyone's assignment, for him to be in a stadium like Tennessee where it's loud and he has to think about everyone's assignments and for him to be, be poised, keep his poise and be calm in situations like that, it's definitely good for Zach and, and he's only getting better at it. So, When you see guys like Talon Shumway and Micah Simon step up and make big plays at the end of regulation and in overtime, what does it do to define this wide receiver group? Because I think that, that we're all trying to figure out what this, this group is. What would you say this group of receivers is? It was good for us. Um, throughout the whole game, I, I wouldn't say we were as productive as we could have been. And it was very good for us to finish the way that we did as receivers, um, coming out and completing passes like that and having Micah just save the game like that. And Talon, his only catch was that touchdown. But whether it was his only catch or his 10th catch, he made it, he made it count. So for us receivers, it's good to, that when we have our number called, we're ready for it. So it's good for us in the future that our coaches can look to us and know that we can be a threat to the field. So. Fessy Satake is a man of many talents. We've seen him in the film room. I just saw him punting the ball back here like 50 yards. But he prides himself on being great in the, in the details. What's the, what's the number one detail that he hounds you guys on week in and week out, practice in, practice out? Making sure that we're serious when, need, when we need to be. Make sure that we have a switch when there's a time to be, to be working and to be serious, and there's a time where we can kind of goof off and mess around a little bit, and that's the type of person that he is. He, he respects us enough as, as adults, I would say, and, and as receivers and players, and making sure that we're taking ownership for ourselves. For, so for Fessy, it's making sure that we're working when we need to be. Everybody talks about balance. The offense wants to have balance. Uh, when you prepare for a team like USC, and they do have athletes all over the field, how do you not specify one side, like go run heavy or pass heavy? How do you find that balance? Uh, we've kind of always seen it as fighting for the ball. We, we have really good running backs. We have really good tight ends, and we have, good, and we have a good quarterbacks, quarterbacks, and we also have a good receiving core. So how we, how we, how we all see it as an as offensive unit is um, making sure that we want, we want the ball. And it's kind of like in our mindset, we want to win overall, but making sure that whoever wants the ball to utilize that opportunity that we have. And that's what we're going to try to do for this week at USC is not just one group of in position um, kind of shining in that way, but everyone. So that's, that's, that's what it is for us.
Now, I've talked to you about this on a couple occasions, but there's just something about the energy that BYU plays with when they're on the road. Like, I don't know what it is, but, like, the juice is high. How do you bring that back to your home stadium? Understanding the, the legacy that we have there at Lavelle Edwards, um, the name itself, it's, it's really good. It's a, it's a legendary name, and, and the reason why the stadium is named that stadium is because of what they've done in the past there at that stadium. So for us, it's, it's important that we protect it, and whenever teams come to our stadium here in Utah, we need to make sure that we take advantage of the opportunity of our crowd here at home. Why do you feel like BYU can win a second game in a row and be the first team to beat USC this season? It'll be big for us. Obviously, like I said, we need to stay consistent, but being at home, I know that we'll, we'll have a lot, of, a lot of fans there to support us coming off a big big road win like that, and us understanding that, that we want to take advantage of being here at home, like I said. so. If you were to pump up the defense knowing that they are facing a freshman quarterback who's 18 in his first road start at Lavelle Edwards Stadium, what would, you, what would you say to the defensive members of your team right before the game? Uh, kind of just chirp at them a little bit. Uh, our defense is very good at that. Uh, they do it to us as well. They, uh, they have some players on that side of the field who aren't afraid to talk, and I think that's really good for them to, to kind of uh, – Get, get, get in his head if they can. Um, being, us being at home, it, it'll, it'll be real, very loud for him in third down situations or any situation like that. So for our defense, my only advice with them to be would just to kind of fluster him a little bit. Clearly the chirping doesn't phase you though, right? Oh no, I, I see these guys every day in the locker room and I see people like in the SEC, all the chirping, that, that stuff. That was probably the loudest stadium I ever played in, but it was good for us just to, just to keep calm. Aleva, we hope that you and your magical powers can Pull some more touchdowns into Lavelle Edwards Stadium. Good luck against USC. Yeah, thank you.